Good morning, everybody. We have a super long video, but stick with it till the end because I have a message for you guys about Andy Signor and I have another Finn update for you. So let's jump in, shall we? Let's go. We're going to start off with the Imperial College. They had a new state-of-the-art building that was opened on their Hammersmith campus, and it was opened by the Princess Royal. The building houses over 400 scientists that are working on things from the environment, heart, metabolic disease, all kinds of different things. Wonderful. Well, we're going to move on now to Prince Edward. And as I said in my video the other day, he is currently on Helena Island. He's the first royal to arrive there by plane. Previously, you had to go by boat. He met a tortoise that's 192 years old or a, a I don't know, tortoise, a, a, a turtle. I know there's a difference, but I don't know what it is. Um, which I thought, I said, I thought was pretty cool that you could meet somebody that, or a tortoise that met, met you, uh, met your, fi your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather. It's crazy. So he continues his tour. Next up, Edward went to a reception on Helena Island to celebrate St. Helena's sports past, which includes participation in the Commonwealth Games. And remember, he is the vice president of the Commonwealth Games. Yep. All right. Now, he continued on the next day, and he did a walkabout in St. Helena. He was in the town of St. Jamestown when this took place. I think he looks lovely. Now, other than meeting the general public, he also did a number of engagements from civic and community groups. One of his stops was at the Princess Royal Community Care Center, which is located in Helena. He also planted a gumwood tree in the gardens, and it's called the Castle Gardens, because that is a tree that was thought to be extinct before it was rediscovered in 1982. He visited Jacob's Ladder. It's a ladder that leads to Ladder Hill Fort. It's 699 steps. I could not have done that. Then uh, when he got to the top, he was at Blue Point Cliff Top Walk, and he learned about St. Helena's history. He also met with some more international award participants. Let's move on now to Sophie. Sophie went and visited the Harris Girls Academy in East Dulwich, which is in South London. She was talking to the girls about menstrual health and how heavy periods and worrying about tampons falling out of her handbag when she's on royal engagements. And she, I mean, she spoke very frankly. Okay, first of all, let me just say she's wearing Charles's scarf again that she got for Christmas. I think she looks lovely. Okay, now going back, she spoke very frankly and said, and I'm quoting, the number of times I've been on an engagement and I've left my bag and my little child has picked up my bag and if they drop it on the floor, tampons are gonna roll out along the floor. So she's spoken to things. For girls who have heavy periods, working about when you stand up for, from a chair, that's the worst one. And she's calling for period products to be on display at home rather than locked away in a closet. She said a lot of companies make these products, pads or tampons, they can make them attractive, they can make them, you know, it doesn't have to be a taboo thing. Now for people that are going, oh, this is this is um, Megan's thing, period health. Actually, uh, Sophie's been doing this for years before Megan picked it up. Nice try though. And a big thank you to Remy Lot Sauce, as usual, for showing us what she was wearing. Move it on. Let's move on now to Harry and Megan. Now, the article says they made a surprise appearance. I don't know why. They, they do that with everybody. It's a surprise. They break cover. They went to a Bob Marley premiere, okay? So the first thing I noticed was as they're walking in, there's a video of them walking in, and somebody says, F you. You can clearly hear it, but obviously I can't play it. Now, she's wearing this ridiculously long ball gown skirt to a movie premiere that she has to pick up and carry. Now, she's already directing Harry, as you can see. She's pushing him. Look at her arm. She's pushing him this direction. Don't turn around. Keep walking. Come on, Harry. Leading him around like he's a little kid. So none of, nothing like that has changed. That's the first thing I noticed. Now, the next thing I noticed was that th there was 
the red carpet had like different backdrops. This is gonna be a little confusing. First, there was like a green backdrop that had something on it. And then the, there was another backdrop next to it that had something else on it. And they went from backdrop to backdrop. So they get to the first, back. See, see what I mean? Like there's the Marley backdrop. So they get to the next backdrop. Look what I see going on. See these people getting their pictures taken? The guy in the white jacket is walking away. He doesn't even see them. He's not paying attention to them. The two of them squeeze into the corner like nobody even moved over to the left to make room for them. You know what I'm saying? They should be in the middle. They're literally in the corner. The woman in the white dress who's smiling. Megan put her arm around this woman. This woman pulled her arm over. She didn't want to put her arm around Megan. Then they get to, now remember, Harry, the flashing lights, they take me back, they take me back. He seems to be fine with the flashing lights. I, I don't know what to say. When I look at Megan's face, it looks like she might have had some fillers done again because before from the Ozempic, her face looked very gaunt and thin. And now it doesn't look so much. And there is some suggestion. We're coming up on that in just a minute. We're going to cover that. Somebody else has a theory about all that. But do you see what I'm talking about? The different backgrounds? Do you see that? And I also couldn't help but notice that this woman in white never paid Megan one bit of attention at this time. Not, she didn't acknowledge her at all. Not when they showed up and not when they were walking away. Absolutely no recognition at all. Now here's where things get interesting. They come around the corner and they immediately run into the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Andrew Holness, who's there. And so of course they go running up to him. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you. They shake hands. And for once, Megan stood back, let Harry be the first one to say hello, shake hands. You see what she's doing? For once, she seems to be following some sort of protocol. She's standing back and let Harry do everything until she's introduced, which is the way, listen, that's the way the royals do it, but she's never followed it up until now. But for some reason now, she's following it. The Prime Minister's wife doesn't look too happy, but there is one clip. I'm going to leave the sound in because at the end, you're going to hear something. You're going to hear somebody say to Meghan Markle, where's Marcus? You know, like in Marcus Anderson. Listen to this. They're chatting. They're talking. She's fake laughing. Here you go. Where's Marcus? So people are saying this is a dig at the Royals because, listen, let's be honest, neither one of them has said a single word in public on the subject of Harry's father and his health issues. Since they so want to use their platform for good, you might have thought that this would be a good time to speak to other men about getting their prostates checked. And, you know, supposedly Megan advocates for strong women's health and she hasn't publicly wished Catherine a speedy recovery from her abdominal surgery. Instead, they go to the country that basically has said that they want to cut ties with Britain when they vote in their referendum. He was quite rude to William and Catherine when they were there and some of the things he said. However, in general, the visit went well and he also was seen presenting William and Catherine with a special blend of rum that was created for them by Joy Spence. And he was also one of the first people to pay his respects to the new king. I totally agree with this article. They are casting themselves as refugees from a repressive regime. And let's not forget that the other thing driving Jamaica's disdain for the king and crown is the perceived notion of the British royal family's racism. And Meghan was the victim of prejudice during her time in the palace. Remember all that? People are trying to say, look at this, what a royal whatever. This was not the same thing. This was not a royal visit. This was a movie premiere, and there's a little bit more behind the movie premiere than you guys can probably realize. So I'm just not sure I understand what's going on, because they didn't meet with the Prime Minister. They saw him because he was at a premiere. There were no engagements set up for them. They saw a show, and they left. Cheerleader Omid Scobie. Guys, you know he couldn't resist this. I mean, he's still their cheerleader no matter what they say. He put up a tweet that says, a different vibe to the last time we saw Prime Minister Andrew Holness with members of the royal family. 
And with that, I have to agree with Unlikely Bot. It was completely different. This was not a state visit. It was a hello outside of a movie premiere. I mean, I agree. There was no meetings, no welcome, just a handshake. And then, I mean, essentially they got used, but I think they don't mind being used. But it doesn't surprise me that Omid, you know, Omid is working for Harry and Meghan. He's having all kinds of problems. His book isn't selling. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is absolutely true. The State Department has said, don't go to Jamaica. It's violent, home invasions, armed robberies, assaults. I don't want to go to Jamaica. And it was inevitable. People were going to bring up the fact that that's where Megan's wedding to Trevor took place in Jamaica. Articles are coming out now saying that this was a publicity stunt, but that it was done because their Netflix deal is gone. Why do people think that? Well, Hollywood doesn't want anything more to do with them. That's pretty obvious. They're being left out of everything. They haven't produced anything for Netflix. Their contract is up next year, and the person in the white jacket on that red carpet that they were cozying up to was the president of Paramount+. Plus. Yep. Now, supposedly, allegedly, they were invited there by the family of the Paramount boss, Brian Roberts. The Paramount boss himself did not invite them. He is a father of three, and he's the chief executive of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon, and he lives with his wife in Los Angeles. Sounds to me like she's still trying to get Pearl, that, you know, that show about herself as a child, published. But here's the thing. Even if they gave them a contract, it won't be anything like Netflix's. You guys should know that the person who said they were invited by a family member of the Paramount um, CEO is from the Sussex camp. Truth is, we don't know if they were invited, which may explain why the woman wasn't that, you know, listen, I have no doubt that they were cordial to them and spoke to them. Same with the prime minister. You can see from his wife's face, she's not happy. I think they just saw them on the red carpet. I completely agree with this Twitter user. Megan flew to Jamaica for a movie premiere with no affiliation, produced by a studio in direct competition with Netflix. Something's going on. Also noticed, Megan finally put her engagement ring back on. Or people are assuming it's her engagement ring because the way she was moving her hand around, nobody was able to get a good picture. Remember, it was just being fixed. Some people are saying that it was being redesigned. Uh, but again, we can't get a good shot of it. She was wearing her pinky blood diamond, though. All right, next up, Megan's mole. Remember I told you her face was very smooth? Megan's mole said she can see injection marks on her face for the fillers to take up the place where all of, you know, where her face dropped after taking Ozempic. Megan's mole also thinks, first of all, yeah, look at her arm. That's like so bony. But she also thinks that she sees a recording device under her shirt. Any way you look at this, they look like groupies. You gave up royal life to be a groupie. Mm -hmm. And it was also brought up that she's wearing a ball gown and he's wearing no belt, no tie, shirt unbuttoned, and he looks, he looks scruffy to me. That's just my personal opinion. And as usual, Megan can find the camera anywhere. People are making comments that that outfit she had on was the one that she was supposed to be wearing to dance with John Travolta, but when she realized it wasn't A-list, she didn't go. And people are also talking about the fact that supposedly she didn't go to Harry's award because one of her children was ill. Suddenly, apparently, the, the sick child doesn't matter because the two of them are in Jamaica. I guarantee you, by the way, they went on a private jet. Now, there is a rumor uh, on Reddit. I don't. Again, it's a rumor. I don't know if it's true. But the rumor is that the reason she wasn't at Harry's Aviation Awards was because she was already in Jamaica, not that they had a sick kid. Mm. All right. Now, finally, this last clip just got me because I want you to look at her behavior. It's almost manic. Look, looking here, looking there, looking around, touching her, looking back. Look at me, everybody. Now, a blind item came out that said that Harry and Meghan were there in Jamaica because they're trying to save their marriage. They were on the red carpet with the CEO, best friend of the Nickelodeon Predator producer, the same producer who can't, they're saying, even get in the back door. Hmm. Well, I don't know who wrote this on Twitter, but it's perfect. 
I'm going to upstage Jeff Bezos' all-star party by gatecrashing a dead musician's movie premiere in a country that wants a republic while wearing UK taxpayer titles. Exactly. Well, it could be that's why they went to Jamaica, because Jeff Bezos, the third richest man in the world, and his fiance Lauren Sanchez, uh, held a 60th birthday for him that was totally star-studded. It had everyone from A-listers to sports legends and business mongols. Beyonce was there. Ivanka Trump was there. Jared Kushner, Oprah Winfrey, Gail King, Kim Kardashian, Kris Jenner, Haley Bieber, Kendall Jenner. Yeah. It was a star-studded party, and Harry and Meghan were not invited. Go figure. I'm sorry, but there's no way if they hadn't been invited to this party that they would not have gone to rub arms with the celebrities that they want to be friends with and the business moguls and all these people that they could have done uh, you know, business deals with. But I think nobody in Hollywood wants them around. Yeah, people aren't tripping to get near them anymore. And on top of that, there was another red carpet that had Demi Moore, Callista Flockhart, Naomi Watts, because there's a new series, a new Ryan Murphy series, and it was at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Don't tell me that if they had been invited to that, they wouldn't have gone. But the story is just FYI is based on a real life drama because Truman Capote tanked his own social circle by writing an expose on his friends. And so um, they all, you know, cut him off and put a target on his back. So, but yes, I think they would have gone to that had they been invited to that either. Now, next up, I have a message for you guys. Very important. I want you to listen up. All right, really quick message for you guys. I want to talk to you about Patreon. Now, you guys know I've started a Patreon because I got tired of being censored. Um, YouTube lately is censoring people. They're telling me what I can and cannot say. People that put comments are putting put in YouTube jail. They can't comment. Like all kinds of weird stuff is going on. Well, now that same thing is happening to Andy Signor, and he is now moving over to Patreon to listen to this. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going away from YouTube. I can't. We got to use YouTube. It's the biggest video search engine that's out there. And I don't want you to think that what I'm about to tell you is me leaving YouTube. I want to share about this army story. I want to talk about what this means. But I need to take a moment to tell you, we need to do something about this. I need to make sure you get alerted. And I need to make sure that I have a place I can post these videos when YouTube's censoring them or limiting them, that you have a place where you can get them directly where there's no problems. And that place is now gonna be Patreon. And I announced this yesterday and I didn't realize how quickly and how valuable this would become. And now I'm seeing how important this platform is gonna be for this brand. Now you can go over to Patreon and I'm gonna put it at the end as well. So you can click there. I'll put in the pinned comment, patreon.com slash popcorn planet. You can join for free. So I'll be making alerts. You'll get a notifications there. Everything's still the same on YouTube. A lot of people are confused. I'm not switching and going there directly, but I am gonna use that platform to give you the stuff that YouTube won't let me post. So he's got different tiers like I do. I, I have two tiers. It's $1 a month or $3 a month. Andy, being a much larger channel, his tiers are $6, $10, $25, and $50. And so um, he's going to have a Patreon. I'm having my Patreon, which is working out really well. I'm able to say what I want, post what I want. I'm, I'm not worried that YouTube's going to shut me down. So bop on over and give Andy your support. All right, you guys, here we go. Here's your fin video. Enjoy. What is going on? <laughs> Finn, are you cold? You got your toy with you? Are you all, look at, are you all snuggly under there? Uh, you comfy? Okay, go back to sleep. <laughs> oh my God. This is too funny. So I wanted to sit down and he was taking up all the room. Look at that. Only one eye, one eye. Oh my God, that's funny. All right, you guys, I know, super long, lots of information, but I want those comments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you've already done that, double check, make sure you're still subscribed. YouTube is still unsubscribing, people. Don't forget that in the description box, you'll find the links to my Patreon, my father's book. If you've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.